Hey, what's up, YouTube? It has arrived, the Leatherman P4. These are now on Amazon. I'll include the links if you want to pick one up. But the P4 and the P2 are now out. Yes, this is the box that it comes in. Hmm. That's the other side. It also came with this belt pouch. All right, so it's got a belt loop on the back. A little snap on the front. Here is a size comparison for you so that you see they've chosen to go intermediate in length. The length closed is listed as four and one quarter inches, right? So it is shorter than the Surge in the Super Tool 300, but it is longer than the Charge, the Wave, and the Rebar, right? And the weight is listed as 8.6 ounces. So this has one-handed opening for like everything, all right? So, I mean, that's the lock right there. One-handed opening and closing. So I got the saw, got the blade. Right, but you can even open the tools on the other side. You've got the scissors. Right, and you've got the serrated blade. Right, so that is some, I mean, that is very easy one-handed opening. Oh, by the way, I'm left-handed. So that's all with, with your offhand even. And all the folding tools are outboard tools, so you do not have to unfold the handles to even to get at the uh, smaller tools. You just push on these things right here. See that? You just push on those. But this is what they're calling the, it's a pry tool and a package opener. Look how thick that is. Well, I mean, if you're going to pry with something, yeah, it's got to be thick. And then the other tool on this side is the uh, bottle opener and Phillips screwdriver, and again, that's pretty stout. And then on the other side, it's got a bunch of other tools. Let me splay them for you. And you can pretty easily select, you know, individual tools. This has magnets holding the tools in place and holding the handles together, but once you overcome the magnets, you can just swing this out like this, and once you overcome the magnets, it's, the handles are loose like a butterfly knife, so you can easily swing it open, and then it locks right, right there. But you can swing it open like a butterfly knife for the one-handed opening, so that works well. In the four longer slots, it's got plain edge blade, serrated blade, wood saw, and scissors. You got your can opener. You have an awl with a little screwdriver tip. Uh, you have a ruler with a screwdriver tip. You have a two-sided file with another screwdriver tip. You got the Phillips screwdriver, ball opener, package opener, and pry tool for your smaller tools. And there's also like a wire stripper on one of those as well. And here you see the soft wire cutters, the hard wire cutters, the needle nose pliers, the regular pliers, and an electrical crimper. Now you see this, it has a lanyard slot here, this structure here, which if this does not come with a pocket clip, but I've been told they're going to sell a pocket clip separately, and I guess you'll be able to install it on this. You know, I gotta say, for $140, I do feel they should have included it. I mean, I don't have to buy something separately. You know, even though this is a fairly large, heavy tool, so I don't know how many people would use it, but still, it'd be cool if they included it. And I've already seen people leaving comments, uh, basically saying that, you know, that they want a pocket clip because I've been watching the unboxing videos and that's already uh, a common thing in the comments. So yeah, no pocket clip as it, as it comes in the box. Is the tool set missing any major or common tools? Uh, well, it does not have the line cutter that you see on a lot of multi-tools, you know, the line cutter, rescue hook, cutting hook. I'm not really going to miss that though. Now, one thing I've talked about in other videos is the four slots design problem with multi-tools where basically every multi-tool, there's like five major tools that they want to put in the long slots, but there's usually only four longer slots. So how did they address that? Well, you see, they took the file and they shrunk it down. So you get, you get a half-sized file. Another way they could have done things is to offer different versions with only one blade, right? So you'd have a one with a plain edge, or one with a fully serrated edge, or one with a combo edge. So if, if each version only had one type of blade, that would free up a slot and then you could have the full-sized file. 
I don't know if that would sell better or not, but I would like that and I would just get the plain edge version. Another thing they could do is swap the serrated blade for the file. So if they were to do that, instead of that serrated blade, you'd have a full size file like on the Wave, and then instead of the half file, you would have a small serrated blade as they have on the Sidekick. And as far as serrations, I mean, if you do need serrations, a lot of times a little mini serrated blade would be pretty good. Although one thing I do wish that they would team up with Spyderco and put spider edge serrations. This is a Spyderco Ladybug, and this thing, for such a tiny knife, it's got a lot of cutting power. So imagine if they teamed up. Now they'd have to make it, they'd have to make it less wide to fit in the handle, so it'd be, you know, more like this. But still, that would give you a huge amount of cutting power without having to use one of the longer slots and you get a full size file. Just something to think about. I did notice they chose to make the plain edge blade extra wide. They extended it a little, you know, past the frame, right? As they have done in the past with other multi-tools, right? It goes past the frame, right? So it's a little easier to get at, but I noticed they only did that with the plain edge blade, right? They did not do it with the fully serrated blade. The blade length is about two and three quarters inches, right? So it gets under any sort of a three inch or, or longer limit that they have in some places. It is 420 HC, right? So that's a high carbon stainless steel. There have already been a lot of comments and complaints from people basically saying that if this is going to be $140 as it is right now, that they want an upgrade to this steel. They want a better steel. Yeah, that's understandable. I, I hear that. Uh, these days, even the youngsters are, are steel experts, at least uh, armchair experts. But you know, whether you push the limits of the steel's performance in real life, that doesn't matter because people want the better steels these days anyway, no matter what they're doing with their knives. All right, so that is something for Leatherman to consider. Right, and that is a partial hollow grind on that blade. Here is a blade shape comparison with the Super Tool 300. So as you can see with the P4, they've chosen to put the tip of the blade forward of the center line of the uh, knife blade, whereas with the Super Tools, they did not. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense because multi-tool blades are fairly narrow, so if they had done a conventional design like on the Super Tool, there really wouldn't have been much uh, belly to the blade anyway, so it makes sense to go in the other direction. Now they've gone a completely different direction with the fully serrated blade. As you can see on the Super Tool 300, right, it's got a forward tip, but on this it does not, right? The P4, no forward tip, but they give you a sub tip, which could do the same function as far as draw cuts uh, however, to less depth, but they've also done something interesting uh, that that secondary grind between the sub tip and the actual tip They've made that very thick Look how thick they made that right at a very uh, Interesting angle whereas the tip on this this is how the tip on the super tools uh, serrated blade is so what this tells me is that they were afraid that people were like breaking the tips off their knives. So this is it's a lot harder to break this tip off, I would think, because look how, look how thick that is. So maybe that's uh, the reason for the shape change. Now one thing you'll probably notice right away about this new tool, the pivots for the longer, the four longer tools, the pivots are on the opposite end of each handle uh, compared to the pivots connecting the handles to the plier head, right? So that's that. That does it that way, and it is the opposite on the Surge and many of their other multi-tools, right? Right, so because they did it that way, you can have this oriented like this, so you can open, you, know, you can open all the longer tools, and then it just makes it easy to break, to break that magnet and, you know, you can flip it out like that. So that's one benefit of that arrangement. Now the awl on the P4 has a small screwdriver tip at the end. I would say the awl doesn't look as mean, 
but I do believe it could still puncture leather, which is its point, and now it's a little screwdriver. Right, but what about the reaming function, you know, the, uh, the hand drill and the widening a hole on a piece of wood? I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to test that out and see uh, if it's any better or worse for the reamer function. But they list it as an all. They don't mention anything about reaming, so we will see. Another choice they have made, there is no tool exchanger on the P4 like there is on the Leatherman Surge. Now that, that tool exchanger, that allows you to uh, put a hacksaw in there to have a full-size metal file or a wood saw. And there are also uh, like X-Acto knife and uh, utility knife mods on YouTube for how to even put like uh, basically a small precise blade in there. So that tool exchanger, a lot of people like it. It just adds a lot of versatility, uh, but they have chosen no tool exchanger, so that's one reason uh, you get the half-sized file. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know they don't want to make it too super complicated, but it's just interesting, like, will, f will any future models have a tool exchanger, or are they, are they just going a different route? Yeah, I think you can guess my next suggestion here. Leatherman, I hope you do come out with a blackout version now let's talk price. It's currently $140, but do not panic. You know, usually prices tend to go down because with supply and demand, as the inventory increases, right, the supply increases, so the price tends to decrease. So I think that price will, will be trending down, but is it worth it right now? You know, I might have, if I was not having, you know, anxious to review this, I, I might have just waited. I've heard that the price is even crazier in Germany. I've heard, I've heard it's over uh, like 200 euros and a euro is worth more than a, a dollar, at least right now. So 200 euros, holy crap. That, that is a lot. That is a lot. So yeah, the price is up there. I mean, a lot more than a Leatherman surge, but you know, in a way, this could help Leatherman because with this being so expensive, it kind of will help people justify finally uh, buying a Surge because now the Surge is, uh, is a bargain in comparison. Yeah, so if you're on a tight budget, should you buy this? Should you save up and buy this? I would say check out their other tools if you're on a tight budget and just, you know, weigh things carefully or wait a while. But they also have the P2 out now. Now the P2 is currently $20 less. And the P2 does not have the wood saw and it does not have the serrated blade or the plain edge blade. It has a combo edge blade. I have not bought the P2 because I really don't like combo edges that much and most of my subscribers don't either. But I do like this P4 so much that I might actually get one just because I like the other aspects of the tool. But I definitely would suggest that Leatherman start offering, especially the P2, they need to offer it in plain edge, in fully serrated, and in combo edge. Uh, you know, it's a huge company, come on, they should be able to swing that. That shouldn't be too logistically impossible. That would be great, I think it would, overall it would improve sales. I would just get a, a plain edged version and be done with it. All right, so what's my initial assessment? You know, I'm going to test this thing out over the weeks and the months and the years. I'm going to test this out a lot, but people don't want to wait for that because it just came out recently. People want to know, should, should they get one? Should they get one? Well, my initial impression, it's a lot better than I thought it would be. I was afraid, you know, it might be a, a train wreck, but no, I, I see no, I don't see any deal breakers with this so far, right? And the benefits... Well, the one-handed opening for, like, everything, they've really pulled that off well. Uh, the magnets, a lot of people have uh, expressed concern, like, oh, the magnets could, uh, could hurt your electronic storage. Yeah, people will have to test that out, but I don't think they're, like, that strong that it, it necessarily is a huge danger. Uh, the thicker tools, like that pry tool, very good idea, and they made that thing stout. All right, so my initial impression, it's very a very positive one. You know, no deal breakers for me so far. All right, and in the comments, you can say what you think and give them suggestions. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll take suggestions and uh, research videos and see what people want. Well, all right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this special P4 edition 
of the multi-tool vlog. Right? And check out the text description box. I will have a lot of links there. This is kind of pricey, so of course I will have the link to that, but I will also have some budget stuff and some just new and kind of weird and entertaining stuff. A little bit of a preview. You know there's a next tool multi-tool? There is. And this multi-tool, you know, this has a hammer surface on one end. Interesting. This is the I don't even know how to pronounce the name of this multi-tool, but these are coming up on the next uh, multi-tool vlog. And if you want a preview, they're already on Amazon. So check out those links. They do help out the channel. All right, this has been We All Juggle Knives and Multi-Tools. I'm out.